Woke up on Monday at 8 o'clock to a flood of sunlight through my window blinds. There was a faint tone of anger in my voice as I answered the phone call that had awoken me, and I told my mother that I was up. I resented her slightly for waking me up, but I knew if she didn't wake me, I would never make it to school on time. While silently pondering this confliction, I decided that I was not going to school that day. The floor creaked slightly as I hurried to the bathroom. My bladder had made it clear when I sat up from my bed that it was not going to wait for me to amble about the house contemplating the day's events before it was thoroughly evacuated. A calm relief swept over my body as I stood in front of the toilet. The need to urinate was quickly replaced with a less urgent need, hunger. I decided this morning should include a breakfast, so I made for the kitchen. Some time passed as I stood staring into the refrigerator. I have always loved standing in front of the fridge, mesmerized by the possibilities of potential meals. Some time passed as I stood staring into the refrigerator. I've always loved standing in front of the fridge, mesmerized by the possibilities of potential meals. Familiar questions began to run through my head. How much do I want to eat? What am I in the mood for? Should I eat at all? After many moments of silent delegation, I settled on pancakes. I picked up a box and felt pleased with my decision as I glanced at a happy, though slightly racist, Aunt Jemima. Slight heat and a faint glow radiated off the top of the stove as I began to heat my favorite pan. Butter stood beside it, waiting to give the pancakes a flavor beyond any other breakfast food save bacon. I carefully measured out the correct amounts of pancake mix and water and stirred them into a thin batter. After adding some butter to the pan, that was ready. The first and second pancakes were made with no major incident. They were evenly cooked with a delicious golden buttery crust around the edges. I had even begun to flip the pancakes by throwing them into the air like a professional. It was not until the third and final pancake that the incident occurred. I should have known better than to use that much butter. I was being foolish. As the bottom of the first side of the pancake finished cooking, I lifted the pan and tossed the food into the air as to flip it. As it came down, it splattered butter out of the pan. As the butter flew at my hand, it seemed as though time itself slowed down so that I could watch the full movement of the butter from the pan to my hand. Such pain. It, it was so much that I, I fell to my knees and cried out as I studied the gnarled remnants of a once untainted hand. I now think of the pancakes from time to time, but no desire or hunger could drive me back to them after what they've done to me. Maybe a day will come when pancakes and I can coexist peacefully, but this burn will not be soon forgotten.